Good morning and welcome to the channel. This is part four of a four part series. So this will be the last video in this series on how to mud where we do the third and final coat. If you haven't seen any of the other videos in the first video, I just explained what we're trying to achieve. The second video, we did our first coat of mud. Third video, our second coat. So this, our fourth video, we will be doing the third and final coat of mud. Let's get started. Okay, to get you caught up to speed here, looking a little closer, you can tell that there's two different colors of mud. There's blue and red. We did our first coat of mud in red and our second coat of mud in blue. This being our third and final coat, we'll just use regular white mud. I used the different colors in hopes to just show more of a contrast between the first, second, and third coats so you can gauge uh, what the purpose is in each of those coats and for the camera to be able to pick up on it a little easier rather than just white mud going onto a white wall. So that's what's up with the colored mud. It's not special or anything. I just dyed it that color. I got my mud on my hawk here. You can tell it's a little more thin and loose than the previous mud I was using for the first and second coat. That's because I put water in it, watered it down a little bit to make it more thin. That way I can pull it a little easier onto the wall and it can spread a little thinner. Because with this third and final coat, it's really only to feather out our seams and everything a little bit more so they're less aggressive. Um, we've already covered up all our tape with the first and second coat. We've embedded our corner beads inside and outside the off angle up here. So everything is covered and if we had done that, I guess perfectly, we wouldn't need the third coat at all. But we do want to feather that out a little more. So for this coat, we'll use a bit more of a wider knife in order to accomplish that. Our seams will definitely grow a little bit more as you can even see in the bathroom here. For our flats, I actually used the 14 inch flat trial and went on either side of that hump we had made in the previous video. And that's just to feather it out more and make it more gradual and less noticeable. So that's the purpose of this coat of mud. I will start with my flats first and then move on to my inside corners and then outside corners will probably be the way I go about things. And because I only have this small flat here in this area, we'll go back into this closet and I'll show you how to do it on a bit more of a longer run. Never mind the dark red mud, that's obviously a lot darker than the more pinkish mud. Um, that was just left over and I used it up in the closet. Same stuff, same coat. So first I wanna knock off any of my ridges. And you can do the whole area at once if you want to, or you can do it as you go. For this small area, I'm just gonna do it all at once so I know I'm good to go. If I didn't clean off those ridges, I can show you what will happen. There's a ridge here I haven't cleaned off yet. So you can see the ridge here. If I shine a light on it, it might become a little bit more noticeable. You can really tell with the light shining on it across the wall how much of a shadow there is. That's quite an aggressive ridge. You can knock a bit of it off like that. So if I were to mud this as is with that ridge there without knocking it off, my blade would ride up on it. And it would cause quite the mess. And then all of a sudden, my mud is almost an eighth inch thicker here to nothing here where there's no ridge. So you don't want ridges. I have to clean up my mess a little bit here. So now that the ridges and high points are all knocked off, we're ready to begin our third coat on the flats. You'll remember in the second coat of mud, which is the blue coat, I used a 14 inch curve trial to go over it, creating a slight hump. So now we're gonna use a 14 inch flat and we're gonna use this edge on top of the mound and the other edge wherever it falls onto the drywall. That way we're feathering it out on either side like this. So I have it on there, I'm going to do one final pass, nice and tight. 
from either side. And you can see how much excess has come off of that, even though it's my like third time going over it. And just like that, that is our third and final coat done on the flats. And you should go over it again and clean up those edges. I'm not going to do the inside corners yet. We're going to jump back into this alcove thing so I can show you how to do the inside corners a little better. Okay, this is our three-way corner and the rest of our inside corners here. So just like the second coat we did, I'm going to make sure my corners are clean with my four-inch knife. Just get in here and knock off any high points again. And now it's time to do our inside corners and I'm going to swap out my four-inch knife with a five-inch knife which is this one. And this will allow me to feather out beyond where I had previously mudded. So by using the five inch knife, we'll go beyond where we went before. And that will just help feather it out. Put some mud on my knife like the other times. There's really nothing different from this than the previous coats I did. And I'll go into that corner. So that might look good, but it is on there too thick. I put it on and then I make sure I pull tight and basically wipe it off. You can still see the blue and red behind it. So I've done this side and I'm going to do every side here and a nice pull to finish. Same with the top. And that inside corner is done. And from this point, I can carry on with any corner I want. I'm gonna do this one first. With the exact same method, I'm putting the mud on there, making sure it's going into the corner. Running this side of my knife against the ceiling. And if I've laid my tape well, that corner should be pretty much perfect. One thing I should mention while I'm doing this is you do have limited time with this coat, unfortunately, because as you start spreading it, it's so thin, it starts to dry out really quickly. So you want to be careful you don't play with it too much because you'll make a mess. And if you don't like the way it looks or it's starting to drag dry mud into your wet, wet mud and making a mess, Either leave it alone sooner than later or clean off uh, the mud you just laid and start again. I should do this flat here too. So I treat it the same way as I did the closet flat which was a little bigger. But I just go on either side of this hump. Make sure I feather it out. Clean up my edges. That. If you do find that your mud is starting to dry out and it's harder to pull, you can just throw it out. <laughs> it is a bit of a struggle if you try and use it as it's uh, drying. So you can see my new coat of mud is overlapping my previous coat. I'm actually going to leave this corner, we'll put a door in here obviously, and the trim for our door will go into that corner. I want to avoid building it out too much with mud, otherwise my trim won't sit flat, it'll be a little tilted. So I'm thinking a little bit of head there by not mudding that corner. We'll jump over to this one though. You can see that I'm piling up my dry mud that's all crusty and beginning to get clumpy off to the side of my hawk. That way I don't mix it in with my fresh nice stuff.
running this side of your knife against the wall only really works if your first and second coat are on smooth and straight. Otherwise, you end up following any humps or inconsistencies with the edge of your knife and you end up making a mess. And when I'm cleaning off my edges, you'll notice I'm putting the pressure on this side of the knife. There's quite a bit of flux there, so I'm able to taper it pretty nicely. And that's how I clean up the edge. Even at this stage, if you see an imperfection that's too big to tackle with this final coat, don't try to. You can always go back and fill in those imperfections or correct them later on. The worst thing you could do is make extra work for yourself and making a big hump and having to sand it down or break it down somehow. So if you're unsure about a situation, if it's in the corner, whatever it is, just leave it alone for the time being, let your mud dry and go back again with a thinner fourth coat even. So now that these inside corners are done, I'm gonna tackle the outside ones. Technically they don't have to be done again because when we did our first coat and embedded them, we did a second coat right on top of it to cover that paper, that corner bead. And our second coat, we went over it again. So that would have been considered our third coat. However, I am gonna go over it again just to eliminate more sanding. I'm gonna feather it out a little more. There's a few imperfections I do see already. So while I could probably sand it at this stage, I do want to just make it look a little better. And because my mud is thinner now, I'm able to pull tighter and get a thinner coat on there. I don't need to tackle the other side of this outside corner at the moment because I have fresh mud that's interfering with my off angle. Right up here, I would rather do my off angle just to avoid again playing in uh, mud that's drying. So for this off angle, I wanna be pretty careful. I don't wanna apply too much mud on or create too much work for myself because I've already done the necessary steps that they recommend in covering it. Those are done, but I'm, I'm gonna do another tight pull with my thinner mud to create a bit less sanding for myself. And for that, I'm actually gonna use an even wider knife. Same idea to overlap my existing mud, feather it out. I believe this is a eight inch knife. So doing the same thing as I did in the first and second coat of this, staying off the corner a little bit like they recommend, putting my mud on first and then pulling it tightly off, cleaning up my edges, applying it the same way I would a regular knife. Cleaning up that edge, making sure that corner is clean before I go into it. So this side of the off angle is done. Now I'm going to go down and do my outside corner here. So for this outside corner, I'm going to use my wider knife to make my overlap. The other corner I didn't have to, but for this one, I'm going to because for this one my 5 inch knife doesn't overlap I could still use my 5 inch and just feather it out a little bit but I do prefer using a wider knife in this situation I think it just provides a better finish oops you can see I'm dragging something in my mud
And that's this outside corner done. Again, I could have left them how they were, but in order to sand just a little less and make them look a little better, I'm gonna go ahead and do that technically fourth coat. Same thing for this side. Mud, clean off my corners, pull it tightly. I can carefully clean off these outside corners. And that outside corner is done. So for the flat that's terminating into my outside corner, I'll do that flat first. And I'll do it just like I did the closet. I'll go on either side of that hump I did in the first coat with the flat. Like that. And because my five inch knife won't quite cover and overlap this seam, I'll go back to my eight inch one. I just really want to make sure if I do use this knife, that when I, after I apply the mud, I pull it off pretty tight so it's a really thin layer. And that outside corner and flatter them. Now for the screw heads final pass, I'm gonna clean up my hop. While I remember that this side of my hawk is the discard pile. And then for my screw heads, the third and final pass for those are just like all the other ones we've done. I apply the mud to my knife, like so. I'm putting more pressure on this side of the knife so I can spread it like this. And then I wipe it off. Mud on the edge. Just like that, we're done. That does it for the third and final coat in this alcove. Um, I'm gonna jump over here and show you how to finish up that butt joint that I did in the second video. If you remember in our second video for our first coat of mud, which was the red coat, I embedded the tape into the butt joint and I wasn't able to get the second coat, which is the blue coat on camera, but I basically just went over it again with my 14 inch curve, created a bit of a mound. So now with my third and final coat on that, Ideally, I've created a bit of a hump where I can feather it out just like I would have flat now. It's really no different other than I went back over it with that 14 inch curve for a second time. Clean up my edges. And that's how I do my third and final coat on this butt joint. Uh, there is another way to do the butt joints if the situation arises. I explained that in my first video, so go check it out if you're interested. But for this situation, I could get by with doing it this way and it will work out fine. Okay, the third and final coat is done. After it's done drying, I'll be ready to sand and prime it. Um, sometimes the primer can bring out defects that you missed just with how the light works. So it's not a big deal. You can go ahead and fix it after it's primed. Um, but ideally, of course, it's good to go from this point on and you don't have to backtrack at all. But that does it for the third and final coat. It also does it for this four part series on how to mud. If you haven't checked out the other videos, go check them out if you're interested. And if you're interested in this off grade cottage build we're doing, there's a playlist dedicated to that as well. That's going to do it for this video, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.